Welcome to Inland Edition, where we have conversations with people who make decisions affecting our everyday lives. My name is Joe Richardson. I'm an Inland Empire resident and attorney and your host. And today, we're going to chat with California's Secretary of State. Born to sharecroppers in Hope, Arkansas, becoming a professor at San Diego State University at age 23 and receiving her doctorate at age 26. Shirley Nash Weber, PhD, grew up in California and is the first African American to serve as our Secretary of State. Driven by her family's experience in the segregationist Jim Crow South, she has fought to secure and expand civil rights, including voting rights, for all Californians. She's driven, she's determined, and an absolute trailblazer. And I can't wait for you to meet her. Secretary of State, Dr. Shirley Weber. Dr. Weber, thank you for being here. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, well, it's quite an honor to be here. Absolutely thrilled to be here. Hey, listen, we've always got room for a trailblazer to come through. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about, you know, you've got such a wonderful personal story and deep in public service. Was there a particular moment that says this this is an aha moment where the clouds open up and the sun comes out and this is how you know you're supposed to be in public service? Or was it just a series of things? You know, I think probably it was a series of things um, because my mother was always involved in something going on and, and we lived in a community of tremendous need. So there's always space for people to do things. And my church at that time had such a focus on young people uh, that we could do things. And when I did some things that I thought were pretty significant, like this huge church that never had a, a, a Thanksgiving dinner for the community. They did not do that kind of community work and kind of being community oriented as a student in high school as well as at UCLA, I, I went to them and said, we need to do a Thanksgiving dinner. Now here I am, you know, probably 15, 16 at the time. And they didn't think we could do it, but they said, okay. And so the young folks got together and we gave this fabulous dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. And the church members were so excited. Some of them actually donated their tur dinner turkey to this dinner. Wow. And so I, I had forgotten about it until someone told me the other day, you know, you've always been active. So I remember you did the very first public dinner at this church and wow. brought everybody in. And we were just kids orchestrating things. I learned then that you could really do things. You could, you could take things and build on it. I took a crew of us when we, we I used to sing and made an album. And uh, wow. I took a crew of them to Chicago. Now, I was 21, and their parents let them go with us. It was, everybody was in their 19s and 20-year-olds, and we went all the way to Chicago to do a concert and to Oklahoma. And uh, it took two cars, and we raised the money, and we did this fabulous thing going across country. So doing these things that, were, that people didn't think young people did at that time was really quite exciting. And I realized that when you really focus on something, you can do a lot, and that I live in a community that's so grateful when you do it that they celebrate you. So, Secretary of State, here's my confession. Somehow, I was always interested in, like, political offices and things. And back when we used to have encyclopedias, I'd look up states and presidents. And okay. this person was Secretary of State. This person was the Secretary of Defense. So I knew in the 80s that Ronald Reagan's first Secretary of State left and was replaced by somebody else. But at that time, I did not know that California <laughs> had a Secretary of State. So tell us about what the California Secretary of State does. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because most folks think of the Secretary of State and they think of all traveling around the world and, you know, fighting wars and solving problems at that level. Uh, the Secretary of State within the states, uh, particularly in California, they're considered constitutional officers. They're like the third ranking individual in the state of California. There's a governor, the lieutenant governor, and then there's a Secretary of State. And that's how you ascend up to become governor in case something were to happen. But, um, you know, the Secretary of State are known across the nation for basically elections. 
we are the official election officer for the state of California. And that's significant in California because there are 40 million people who live here, and about 28 million of them are eligible to vote. And so, so it's a big, we have the largest voting base. But in addition to that, being able to secure the election, making sure that the laws passed by the state are actually implemented in the counties, those kinds of things, so we don't have any, any horrible things happening in during the election process. The Secretary of State has that as a responsibility to work with those 58 counties. Uh, but in addition to that, California Secretary of State, one of the few has really an, an, an archive. We, have, we are the keepers of the archive for the state of California and the state seal. And in our building is an amazing collection of hundreds of thousands of uh, articles and, and, and artifacts with regards to California's history, videos and things. You can go on our website and you can pull up some, even some more recent videos of women who've done some great things in California as well as Native Americans and African Americans because we diversified our archives. So we're in charge of that. And we're also in charge of all of our businesses. All businesses are registered uh, that are profit and nonprofit businesses that are registered in the state of California. And then we deal with, a, we have huge uh, IT uh, things that we do in terms of a tech technology. Uh, so it's a large uh, organization, about 600 Californians work in the Secretary of State's office. And so it's, it's a major responsibility. And most folks know us as elections, which is because everybody's going to interact with that at some point. But we have all these other things. We interact with all of our businesses, small, large businesses. Everybody's registered in the state of California. At the risk of asking something that a lot of us ought to know, tell us who can vote in California and how we <laughs> register. Well, first of all, anyone who's a citizen uh, and resident in California can, is, can, and, and over the age of 18 can vote. Um, and we, and, and there are, oh, there's only one exception to a person who cannot vote who meets that citizenship requirement and age requirement, is that you cannot be sitting in a state or federal prison. But everyone else can vote. If you've committed a felony in the past, you can vote. If you are on probation, you can vote. If you're on parole now in California as a result of Prop 17, you can vote. The only person in California who cannot vote who is a citizen is someone who's been physically sitting in a state or federal prison and has uh, and committed a, a felony. So everyone else is walking around here talking about I would vote, but I don't have, they can. Okay, and so we have we've been registering, and that's we've been pushing that because so often people had always thought, well, if I've been a fel if I've committed a felony, I'm a felon, I can't vote. That has not been the case in California, even before the, the many of the changes that we've done. Uh, when I ran for the assembly, it was it was interesting. There was a young man who worked really hard on my campaign in 2012. And uh, he was a friend of an older lady. He'd come by after work, and he'd work on it, and he'd stand on the sign and uh, the streets with the sign about work, voting for whoever. And he said to me one day, as we were rounding out the, the campaign, he said, this is the first time in my life I really wish I could vote, because I know you. And I thought, why can't you vote? And he whispered, I'm an ex-felon. I said, what does that have to do with California's voting? He had no idea he'd been out of prison. He'd been, committed this felony maybe 20 years ago. He had no idea that he had the right to vote. So we registered him immediately and he voted in his first election. And that said to me at that point, there are an awful lot of people who don't know this. And so when I got to the uh, assembly, there was one of the first, some of the first bills I authored was about informing ex-felons and so forth and so on that they can vote. Uh, and then, like I said more recently, we uh, allowed those on parole to vote. Uh, so all of the Californians sitting out there wanting to vote, uh, you probably can if you're a citizen in California. If you're not in a prison and you're looking at me from your home or wherever you are at Starbucks or drinking coffee or doing whatever you're doing, you can register and you can vote. You know, California in so many ways leads the way, right? And often you can pick the subject, technology, whatever else. Uh, often we create a template that the rest of the country is looking at. Um, talk about the ways that California innovates as it pertains to election-related things and some of the next frontiers that you see coming along. We've got another presidential election. Theoretically, presidential mm -hmm. elections tend to be higher turnout elections, yes. et cetera. We've got another one coming up. Talk about some of the things that are, that are on the cusp of happening and the things that you're excited about your office being able to continue to do and to do further. 
Well, you're absolutely correct when you say California leads, because so often we will uh, be the ones who step out and do things that others have, won't do uh, or they're not going to do. Uh, also, California has a large voting base and a large party voting base, so that makes it sometimes easier on certain issues to, to legislate and to get things done. Um, we're looking forward to uh, the time when we will be in a position where we will have every Californian registered to vote. And that's taking a lot of work from our outreach teams, uh, getting into communities. We've gone in communities where no one's ever gone before, way out in deserts and places to, to get people to understand that their vote is important and seeing their, their numbers increase in terms of registration and engagement. So we're, we're pushing that particular issue. We're also being asked to talk a look at a different thing, which is 100% which is voting, which means that every person in California would be automatically registered to vote. And, wow. you know, and the only way you couldn't vote, you'd have to take your name off the rolls. So this would be a positive thing, that everyone would be registered to vote. And so we're working with that. There's a community group that's working to get 100% registration in California. It happens in Colorado and other places, and as a result, their turnout oftentimes is in the 80s and 90 percentile in those who are registered. So California wants to do that. Uh, and, um, and we're looking forward to that. We've got a community group that's pushing it along, hoping working with DMV and some others to make that happen. So that's important. We also really going into areas that people hadn't thought about. In the next few days, I'm going to go into an Indian reservation, and we're going to actually set up a voting uh, wow. uh, center in a reservation. One would think that we had plenty of those, but we don't. This will be the first in the nation that we'll do in a couple of days to actually have a voting center in, a, in an Indian reservation nice. to validate the role of our, our Native Americans in, in, in the voting process and the selection process. So you, you would think that everybody does that, but this is, this is exciting for me and for others to talk about us moving into those areas that we haven't been before. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to expanding our engagement with communities groups. I met with some ch ministers last night. We've been in and out of the churches. We're trying to get them to, to take the lead as well to say, you know, my congregation is going to be 100% voting. Uh, that yes. would be important. So we're doing that. California has already decided that it's going to pre-register 16-year-olds to vote. And we've done more than a million pre-registrations of 16-year-olds. Wow. Nice. And what happens is when, they, when they're when they pre-registered to vote, we then invite them to work at the polls. We pay them $140 a day or something to wow. work at the polls, to get young people, high school students, engaged uh, to, to see that they're a part of this process. And it, it doesn't just start with voting. It starts with everything. Those students then who register to vote, who pre-register to vote, rather, then are pushed forward when it comes to their election time. They get letters from me saying, now is your moment. Now is your time. You, you're becoming 18. Be sure to vote. So we follow them through the process to make sure they're involved in it. We also have an amazing program with our college students. Every University of California has a voting box on, on its campus. Uh, we, want it. we have an agreement we made with the university to make sure they put those boxes there, that they're accessible to every student. And then we have competitions on our campuses. Uh, Stanford won last year. Some others have won, uh, where the students are uh, basically seeing who can register the most students, who can have the largest voter turnout, uh, who has the most innovative way of reaching students, all those things. So we want our young people engaged. And those college students are just fired up about it. They meet periodically uh, to discuss what they're doing on their campus. We give them assistance. We have a staff that works with them. We give them assistance. We go to their campuses for different activities. So we're trying to say, you know, to California, this is not something you wait to do when you're 18. Uh, this is something you, you do as a part of your life, that as you become an adult, you learn the, the importance of voting, and you learn that you, your vote counts, and you learn how to participate in the process. So we've had a lot of young people who've been registered to vote, who's gotten involved in political things, They're, either volunteering in their community, working with their local official. Uh, when we go to high schools, the mayor shows up, the city council shows up, the board of supervisors show up to encourage our young people in high school to pre-register to vote and to, to meet their elected officials. So we want to make this a, a culture, voting as an important culture in California, uh, because this is our young people, and they need to understand the relationship that they have to voting and why they need to vote and what an impact it has on their life as well as the life of their families. Uh, many kids who've pre-registered to vote have then registered their parents because uh, their parents weren't voting and, uh, and for various reasons. And so we try to get into all the communities. We try to go into the areas that's hard to reach, uh, go in communities that have kind of been left behind and try to get them to register and get them active in voting. 
Uh, we help them find people to work in their polls. Sometimes they don't, can't find people that are willing to work. Uh, we, we have a registry. We try to get people to go to different areas to register to vote. We want to make voting day a really important day in, in California. And so we're working hard on those issues to get us to 100% registration. Talk about representation, not only being a representative, uh, which you've been in so many capacities, but the notion of representation. You as a trailblazer, mm -hmm. fifth uh, African-American state constitutional officer in history, and that's a long history in the state of California, uh, first African-American secretary of state. Talk about the responsibilities that come with not only being a representative of everyone, but the notion of representation because of what you exemplify and mm -hmm. because of the example and the possibilities that you being where you are presents. You know, it's, it's really, really important that we have representatives that come from every community and every walk of life. Because if you have to be in a room where people are making decisions, you hope those people will have people in there that understand your world and can speak for your world. And, and if not, then they make very bad decisions. You know, I, I remember when I first got on the school board, one of the first meetings I attended, we were talking about increasing salaries for cafeteria workers. And, and it was minuscule, you know. The, the, and, and I had one member say to me, well, I don't think we should give them raises because, I mean, these are non-thinking positions, the person said. And this was a school board member. And, and so she had a very low opinion of cafeteria workers who, who greet our children every day when they come in for something to drink or whatever they're going to do. And she was, and everybody was kind of listening to her. And I had to speak up and say, you know, my mother was a cafeteria worker part time at my elementary school. And she went in at 11 o'clock or whatever it was and stayed for two hours to make sure we all had lunch. And she thought every day. So she had a thinking position. So I'm offended when you, when you denigrate cafeteria workers, who, who, some of the lowest paid people, and yet some of the most significant people in the lives of our children. That shut the whole room up. But they never is. talked about cafeteria workers again. <laughs> they gave them their raise. They had poor, you know, but, but if I had not been there, people would have just kind of, oh, they maybe wouldn't have said that, but this woman made this statement and so opposed to cafeteria workers. And so, and, and with no idea that my mother had been a cafeteria worker in my elementary school. It is important that we have people in those rooms, in those places, in those spaces, who not only have the desire and the, and the strength and the courage to speak up, but have the experience to go with it so that it's not all the same folks making the same decision. One of my friends who was a congressman said, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And that is true. And the people there are not paying you a whole lot of attention. And yeah. so we, uh, so I think it's important. I, I take my responsibilities very seriously because even when I was at, at the university, there would always be someone who'd come to me five and six years later and said, you know, when you said so-and-so, whatever it was, you inspired me to go to college. You know, yeah. you inspired me to do this or do that. And sometimes you are totally unaware that there's a person out there that has a message from you that's really, really important. So when you're a representative, you know, people come to me and, and want me to meet their daughters, want, want me to take pictures with their daughters. You know, you're the highest ranking black woman in California, one of those kinds of things. It is important that they see me as them, not some highfalutin woman who, you know, speaks with big, big lettered words, but someone who actually came from a, a space that they were in and had support and, and put in great effort and hard work and could basically define what she wanted to do with her life. It's important that we have those representatives that, we, that people can see. And we see that significance in, in women. We see it in, in people of color. We see it in those who traditionally have been left out and locked out, that somebody has opened the door and figured out how to get in and now has a responsibility, I believe I do, to keep that door open. When I was a, an assembly member in, in San, from San Diego, I discovered, and I didn't pay much attention, that I was the first African-American to ever serve in any state position in California. Mm. And in terms of constitutional officers, I'm only the second constitutional officer who's ever ha occupied a constitutional position in the 170 years history of California and San Diego that the only other constitutional officer in San Diego has been Governor Pete Wilson. That's wow. it. So wow. we've not occupied any of those positions before. So it is important that people know that they exist, that there are opportunities to do that, and that that person in that position is going to always be trying to open up another door for another group of people to make it easier for people who have hard lives to really climb that ladder. And so when I discovered I was the first African-American, 
I said, I may be the first, but I won't be the last. And that was my goal. And so far, we've added more black women and, and, and Latino women to the whole pool of, of folks being elected for the first time from areas that we've never had before. And we have a number of African Americans who never were in positions now that had never in, in the state had anyone African American wow. serve in those positions in the legislature. So we're expanding, we're growing. And I think when we do that, we end up with better vision, better legislation, better opportunities, and a view of the world that expands everyone's horizon because they know you, they know who you are, and they can then begin to say, you know what, I can call on this person to do certain things. I'm going into this area. Let me see if she can help me get there. That's extremely important that you have those hookups and those, those opportunities as well as they want to be an elected official or they want to be on a commission or a board or whatever it may be. So it is an awesome responsibility. I've had it many times when I was at the university and only black female was chair of a department or whatever it was. Um, you understand that you have a responsibility to, to represent and to represent well and to educate the others who are not African Americans about what African Americans can do, will do, and must do for the whole state. Wow, fantastic. Maybe this is the easiest part of the, individual, uh, of the interview. I'm going to ask a teacher to give us some homework. <laughs> and we want to follow up. How do we find out more? How do viewers find out more about the Secretary of State's office, you know, your function, et cetera, maybe local offices or however? How do people follow up um, um, with the Secretary of State? Well, you can always go to our website and sign up. We have lots of folks who sign up to get all of our information that's there. That's extremely important. Uh, my staff makes an effort to put my schedule out because I'm up and down the state and most things are I can come to um, we're often invited to places to be there and, th and that's important to us that we try to be everywhere we can uh, and either me or my staff one of us will, will do that uh, it's important also for people to decide what they want to contribute to the state of California you know people trying to sit back and wait and I even though like I said I was asked to do these things asked to run for this or that I had done so many things before, it's why people ask me, you right. see, that I decided that we were going to do a, um, a, a African program at San Diego State and take black students and communities to South Africa every year. You know, uh, those are the kinds of things, doing a, a program with, on Du Bois with the NAACP on weekends to give kids a culture that they needed. Everyone needs to decide how they're going to make their world better. And one of the ways to do that is obviously through elections, through secretaries of state, through the programs that we have in our archives. You want to be involved with that. You can contact us at any level and, and, and be a part of our, our friends of the archives, friends of the museum. All of those things are extremely important in every community. I tell folks, if you want to change the life of, of a person, you need to pick a person whose life you want to change. You know, you can talk about changing the world. You know, and that's a big task. And then, as my friend used to always say, but the world can't hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say you're going to change the world, everybody's changing the world, but uh, who, who came up to you and said, hey, what happened to the cookie you're supposed to bring to the party? <laughs> you know, whatever it is, no one's holding you accountable. So I had, in my life, what I've done is I've made it my business to, to, to identify a person whose life I can change. And, and, and it's been amazing over the last 40 years, 50 years of, of being an educator, that there's so many of those that I have and then they, they've gone and changed some other people's lives. But it's important for us to, to realize that we have the power and the ability to change the world that we, in which we live. We're not a victim of the world. We are actually those who are architects of this world. And as a result, we need to make sure that the space where we sit, the place where we work, wherever we shop, that we have the ability to be powerful individuals who can help those around us who can help us become better. And normally when I finish with something, most folks will come as, as a lecture. I was at, doing the White House Fellow recently and asked me, could they, I be their mentor? And I said, well, what do you expect? And they said, I just know, I want a person I can call periodically when I run into these difficult challenges and who could listen to me and maybe give me some advice. So I said, sure, you know, I'll be, mm -hmm. your, I'll be your mentor in that sense. Because that's what it means to have the resources that you have, the knowledge you have, the influence you have to help somebody else navigate the world as you navigate it. I've always had a mentor in my life. I've always had a couple of them who, who were ahead of me in terms of activities and that I could call to and honestly discuss frustration, discuss ideas, those kinds of things, and they've helped me to become the person that I am. 
And um, I think my longest standing mentor uh, that I had in university was Dr. Malefi Asante out of, mm -hmm. out of Temple University. And to this day, it doesn't matter what's happening, uh, Asante is going to call me if I mm -hmm. won the election, if I'm running for something, if I've been appointed to something, he's going to call and leave a message for me while I'm driving down the street. I'm going to get a message and a call from Asante. It is important that we recognize the power that we have as individuals to change people's lives. And, and I, I tell everyone in Secretary of State, you're frustrated by elections, go out and register a couple of people. Yeah. You know, make sure that everybody in your household is registered. I always tell parents, don't feed your kids if they don't register to vote and don't vote. You know, and, and everybody laughs about that. I said, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. If you got adult kids who don't vote, don't be feeding them. Don't be, right. you know, giving them good stuff because they're not helping themselves right. because voting is just that critical. So we, we encourage folks to register to vote. I tell everybody, if you don't know anything you need to do, you can find out by simply going on our website or going on your Register of Voter website. You can register online now. People can register to vote online, and they will send you the card and information that you need. So it's really important that we take control of ourselves. If you're frustrated with the world, take control of it. Make your world better. Uh, let us know in the Secretary of State that you want to work on elections, and the day of elections, that you want to do something on the day of the polls. Maybe you want to be one of the persons that we send around to, to, to check off and to make sure everything is going well. We always need lots of folks to help us. And, uh, and being one of those persons to love elections and want to see our, our state better, uh, take advantage of it. But equally important, make sure that you know someone every day for a year that you have changed their life. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how grateful it will be for you to actually touch the life of somebody that you not that you see. Well, from one South Central native to another, Dr. Weber, uh, Madam Secretary, uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And I want to thank each and every one of you for following us, checking us out on the Inland Edition. If you missed it or if you need to tell your friend that missed it, uh, you can always check it out on YouTube. And... Keep joining us as we walk down the road and have conversations that help change us for the better, just one at a time. We'll see you.